massage nerds, I have a very special video for, for you today. It is on the sciatic nerve, and I'm going to give you a little bit of anatomy, physiology, and some techniques. So the sciatic nerve, it is the longest and widest nerve in the body. It can be as thick as your thumb. It has five roots coming from the lumbosacral area. So it comes out of L4, L5, S1, 2, and 3. They, go, they come up posteriorly. However, they go anterior through the ilium, the, the bone, and then it comes out out of the um, greater foramen of the ilium right here. So then it comes out posteriorly again. So from here, it goes to the anterior and it comes out posteriorly underneath the piriformis. So it goes down the leg and it splits again into several nerve roots. So it splits into the tibial nerve and the common uh, fibular nerve. And so it starts splitting down. It has several roots. So however, it for the most part, it goes down the hamstrings and into anything below the knee is the sciatic nerve and it's all its branches. It doesn't really affect any of the glutes. The only thing that can affect it is the um, entrapment from the piriformis. And a lot of times there are... Uh, there are uh, there is pain that mimics sciatic nerve pain, but it's not. So I want to make sure that you guys do the three tests that can tell you if it is true sciatica. You can do the straight leg test, the Braggers test, and the piriformis syndrome test. I have another video where I show you those, so I'm going to include the link below so that you can go back and look at those tests and how you do them, because you do those while your client is supine. Um, I want to talk about the difference between entrapment and compression. Entrapment is when the muscle traps the sciatic nerve. So that's something that's soft tissue. That's something we can help the client with. It's usually the piriformis or the hamstrings. That's the reason when you're working on somebody that has, you know, sciatic nerve pain, you just, you just can't work the glutes and the deep hip rotators. You've got to work the hamstrings because it affects the hamstrings and the lower part of the leg. So you've got to work all of this area. And also it can be uh, compression. Compression comes from the bone. That's beyond our scope of practice. That can be from herniated disc, uh, stenosis, um heels, I mean, uh, bone spurs, uh, slip disc or stenosis from the narrowing, you know, in the vertebrae. So that's beyond our scope of pra practice. So compression is from the bone. Entrapment is the muscle trapping that muscle and causing it to, you know, to be inflamed and to be flared up. You never want to work directly on the nerve it, it, because it'll irritate it more. It usually feels like shocks or tingling or numbness or cold. So you never want to work directly on the nerve. Okay, that's, that's a no-no. You want to release the muscles around it. And I'm going to show you a, a few techniques. And it's some of the common causes for it to be injured or inflamed is, you know, poor lifting uh, techniques, you know, when people don't use their legs, they just bend over. And uh, another one is uh, when they're overweight and or they have, a, you know, weak abdominals or a big belly or even pregnant women, you know, because they're carrying all the weight up in the front and it really puts, you know, uh, stress on the lumbar area. So those are some of the causes. So now let's get to some of the techniques um, so you want to go ahead and explain to your client what you're going to do. If they do, after you do the, the three tests, and let's say it is, you know, uh, uh, sciatica from the nerve entrapment, something that you can work, you can work on the piriformis, make sure you explain to your client that you're going to drape them down, but they're going to be, you know, covered safely cover because that that's important you want to tuck in at the waist and then you can work this area so let me show you guys some techniques so one of the things that i like to start with is the myofascial release and just that means just some gentle you know stretching 
Uh, the sacrotuberous ligament is very important because the sacrotuberous ligament comes from, well, from the sacrum and it joins also with a hamstring ligament. So it's one, you want to work all this area. So one of the things I like to do just to start warming it up is I take my forearm, you know, and I go into a squat, into a horse position, and I can put my hand, my fist here on the table and just go back and forth back and forth to really start just warming up all these muscles that go across the sacrum. Now remember that the nerve, if I press here, I'm not pressing on the nerve because the nerve comes goes anteriorly. So you can press here, you know, just palpating gently. You know, you can even go here. I'm, I'm doing, I'm scooping out. I'm scooping out and I can also go to the opposite side and scoop that way. You know, I can scoop that way. Another one that I can do is with my left fist, you know, I can, I'm right on the edge of the sacrum, sacrum, I'm sorry. And then I'm with my right hand, I'm kind of stretching towards, you know, away, kind of stretching here, some muscles here, putting a little bit of traction. You know, this is just something that I can do and I can even bring it to the same side and just make sure you don't touch anything around here that you, you know, just separate right here. Like especially if you've got the muscles right here. The piriformis originates on the anterior part of the sacrum. This is one of the deep lateral hip rotators. So there's six of them here. I only drew the piriformis because it's usually the one that traps the sciatic nerve. It looks like a little pizza slice right here and the sciatic nerve comes from underneath and it goes and starts splitting. It becomes one thick muscle and so the sciatic nerve only serves the hamstrings but be from the knee down it's all sciatic nerve and it breaks into the tibial, tibial nerve, the fibular, the common fibular nerve, and then that splits into two. So anyway, it starts, you know, having different branches here. So I got off topic. Sorry, I do that. But so you can put a fist, a soft fist, and just separate the muscles here a little bit. You know, you can push. You can press and push here. And that's the reason why they give you a, a shot in the gluteus medius because it so it doesn't hit any of the nerves. When you get a, 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 a shot, you get it on the gluteus medius, which is a little higher and nothing below, you know, half the, uh, the glute down. One muscle that mimics sciatic nerve pain is the gluteus minimus right here on the edge. You want to palpate gently because if, if, if it's tight, they're really going to jump. So make sure you palpate gently. And all I'm doing is scooping out, you know, just pressing gently. Pressing gently. And then here they all insert at the greater trochanter. The boniest part, that's a bony landmark. The greater trochanter is right here. And you have all, like a hubcap, you have all the deep hip rotators right here. So you want to work all the way from the superior and work inferior. Just really getting in there and releasing the insertions of all the, the lateral hip rotators. So that's another thing that you can do. And then you've got your IT band. So one of the things that I like to do is, you know, of course you're going to warm up the muscle. You're going to do some friction. You know, you can do all the way up, you know, and let's go back, I'm sorry, let's go back now to the, the gluteus maximus sometimes uh, presses also on the sciatic nerve. So you, you want to do hand over, palm over palm compression. I'm pushing up just to release it. I already pushed down, remember? I already pushed down. I already went down. So you want to get it from different areas. The more, the more you do, the more movement you do to this area, the better. And you know, you can do some nice petrissage. 
I can't do too much because I'm not using oil since <laughs> because otherwise it would really take off the paint. But I'm trying to warm up the muscles now, okay? And one of the things that you can do is I am going to show you. I'm going to cover you up. I am going to bend her knee. You're going to make sure that this knee is in, in towards the inside. And I'm going to use a soft fist right where the pair of, right where that hubcap is okay and I'm going to move in medially and laterally medially and laterally her hip just pumped so you want to be careful you don't want to force anything but this really gets some movement right there to start releasing some of the piriformis you can, and then you can move I'm sorry I didn't tell you that you can start you know you can move your your hand up to the edge of the sacrum while you do this movement. This is an excellent movement to go ahead and start releasing some of the piriformis, the entrapment. So you can go distal to proximal or proximal to distal. I like to do it both ways. Start proximal and then distal or distal to proximal. Either one of those, okay? So let's say that now you've moved down, you've worked the glutes. Now I want to do also some pin and stretch on the hamstrings because remember that the sacrotuberous ligament is the one that attaches to the hamstring uh, ligament too. So you can start again with a soft fist and do some pin and stretch. You can do it slowly every three then you move down like an inch and just press and what I'm doing is I am pushing with my right leg and my right fist you know you don't want to do this you don't want to put 90 degree angles and like I said, if you want to release sciatic nerve pain, you don't just focus on the glutes. You've got to work the hamstrings. And the sciatic nerve is deep to the hamstrings. So I know it looks like I'm working directly on it. So if your client starts feeling tingly or numbness or like a shock, then you stay off of it and you move to the sides. However, you know, she's, she's not, uh, you know, she's not complaining and she's, she told me no, that it didn't hurt. So you also want to do some stretching. That's all I'm doing. It's just some stretching here, some myofascial release to stretch some of those uh, hamstrings, especially the biceps femoris the semi-tendinosis and the semi membranosis you know, you want to go ahead and do some stretches here, some myofascial release, after you've already warmed it up and you've done some pin and stretch. And then you can move down to the calf. It's very important for you to work the calf, the gastrocnemius and the soleus. So I like to separate the gastrocnemius, avoid the popliteal. You've got major... Um, arteries and veins that go through the soft part so you want to avoid the popliteal so I like to separate it and go to the origins so I move up with my thumbs and separate and then uh, you can also use your fingers if you like you want to work the soleus too you've got to work this area here too, the soleus or soleus. I want to do some lifting, you know, like separating the fibers, really separating the fibers. This is another technique. Another one that I want to show you is if you move her leg off the table, this is going to be an active, um, an active action, <laughs> a range of motion, active range of motion. So. Well, I'm going to ask her to dorsiflex. So she can dorsiflex as I go up the leg. So she's going to dorsiflex. Or I can even have her door. I can even do it for her. If it's a passive, I'm going to do it for her. But I get her. See, but I'm too short. I can't reach all the way. So I put it in my thigh. And then I have her dorsiflex. Dorsiflex here. To stretch that sciatic nerve, okay? To, and to get the muscles to start putting pressure on that. So you can get her to dorsiflex. And 
And with your, if you, with your hands too, you can just go up. So this is another one where the client does it herself. That's active. When you do it for them, that's passive range of motion. So another one that I want to show you would be what I call the frog. So let me make sure that you bend the knee. You're going to bring it out. You're going to put it at the, at the opposite knee level. And you're going to bring the sheet where even if she feels comfortable, she can go ahead and uh, hold on to the sheet so she feels nice and safe. There you go. Hold on to the sheet yourself. And this is another one, too, where you can really get to the insertions, the hubcap of all the lateral, the six lateral hip rotators. This is a great one to be able to go in here like this and to pull down, you know, like to really separate and release all of these insertions. I really like this technique here. Another one is if you put the knee off the table a little bit, like maybe about two or three inches off the table. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lift her knee up a little bit at the same time that I'm putting pressure here. And I'm not doing this with my shoulder, I'm kinda using my whole body just to lift and go and putting pressure with my fist all around right here the trochanter. This is an excellent way to work the IT band. You can even go here with the IT band. You can do the forearm. You know, you can do the forearm with your eye and move your, I'm pushing with my legs. So I'm going back down and just push with my legs. This is great to work the IT band. You can use more pressure. You can use a fist. Remember that the gluteus maximus inserts right here at the linea aspera of the femur along with the IT band. So you've got to release this soft tissue here, all these fibers here. You know, you can do fist over fist, hand over hand, or forearm to work the IT band and also to work the, the TFL, the tensor fascia latte. This is another little muscle here. So you, you've got to work all these, uh, all these muscles. And this is an excellent, excellent position to put your client in and be able to work everything. And when you're going to put the leg back, you always assist. I put my right hand underneath their knee and then just bring it out and strain it out for them. Okay. So you want to tie it all in together. And then you might want to go back again over the piriformis and just remember you go to the, it originates on the anterior part of the sacrum. So you want to just separate it here, bring it down and really try to release this. Or you can use a soft fist and, you know, with the other hand, just separate the fibers here. Now I want to turn her sideline because I love the sideline position. You can really get to all these muscles here. So let's do that now. Okay, so from this side of the table, this is excellent. Look at the IT band, how exposed it is right here. So you can pin and stretch, like hold it here with your left hand. And then with your forearm, you can go, you know, proximal. Or you can use your fist here, you know, pin and stretch, go up. You can glide or you can do one inch at a time. This is excellent. The IT band, remember, connects with the gluteus maximus right here at the linea aspera. You can work the TFL from this because now it's relaxed with a, with a bent knee and the bent leg. All of these muscles are a little bit relaxed. You can get the deep hip rotators right here from this side. So you can go on the opposite side of the table, which is contralateral or, you know, on this side. So here you've got to work all these muscles here. You can pull towards you. You can do circular, circular motion. You can also do cross fiber. You can do cross fiber here on the IT band. 
I love cross fiber here. You, like you're sawing just back and forth at the IT band. Distal to proximal or proximal to distal. So this is an excellent way to position to position your clients. You can follow it all the way up and work the TFL, all the glutes, the deep hip rotators, and part of the hamstrings here. So anyway, I hope that this gives you a lot of different positions that you can work on your client. You can also work on them supine, but watch that video that I'm going to include the link where you can do the test. And I hope this helps. And until the next time, create a great day.